For today's science wrap, we've got a twist. We're doing food tests, a wrap as usual, but then we're going to do a practical afterwards. And we're joined by Labour MPs Bridget Phillipson and Peter Kyle, the MP for Education and the MP for Science. Let's get straight to it. This lesson is on food, starch, fat and protein are a few. Here are all the tests you will do For starch into a chew Orange eye dying, change is blue Next up is Benedict's solution That's for testing sugar Reagent is blue The more sugar the redder For drops you need a few Moving on, let's look at lipids It's ethanol for that Goes from colourless to cloudy That's the test for fat The biorec test is the one to check protein From blue to purple Using A and also B so what we're doing today yeah. is we're going to do a little practical, which yeah. is done GCSE biology, and and whilst we're doing that, we're going to have a chat, go through a few questions. Great. Yeah. So it's been um, a while since I've done anything like this. Uh, hey, right. Well, I've got a little bit of question for you. I'm going to put you on the on the spot, okay. right? Science-wise, do you know what the chemical test is for starch? No. No. Okay. Well, it's iodine. Okay. But I thought I thought I'd put you on the spot. Yeah. But so <laughs> that's right. That's okay. I don't mind parading my ignorance about this. I, <laughs> the, one of the great things about this job is just I'm learning all the time. I am constantly around people who know more than me about policies, about science and technolo technology, inventors, people who are creating companies, they understand yeah, yeah. how to grow companies, people who understand social media and how to communicate. And it was just so exhilarating for me just to be surrounded by people who know more than me. I mean, every day I learn, so. I feel like anyone in science has to have that mentality. So that's, yeah. that's, that's amazing. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we are going to get, I'm gonna give you this mortar and pestle. Okay, I know what that is. Great. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So I was going to get some some normal ones, but because you know we've got you. Well, are these um, not normal? No, these these are good ones. These oh, are okay. Good ones. Yeah, we reserve these just for the best. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we are going to get a teeny little bit. That was a good save. We are going to get a little bit of. Is that sugar? Yes. Yeah, oh, thank God for that. I, I knew yeah. what it was. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to take a small bit of that, put it in your mortar, just like that. Yep. Yeah. Kind of bucket science. And then what we're going to do is here is your water. You're going to pour a teeny bit of water. Is that a technical term? Teeny. Teeny, yeah, it's very, very technical. It's, uh, I've got a master's in that. So. <laughs> and what we're doing is we're crushing this up because we believe there's sugar, reducing sugar in here. But you know, you don't want to take my word for it. Okay. You want to test it yourself by using something called Benedict's solution. Okay. And so what we do is we crush this up, which is hopefully release the sucrose and possibly glucose and other sugars in there. Yeah. And whilst we're doing this, we'll do it for about a minute and a half. I've, I've got a question. Okay. So my first question for you, what do you think will be the most scientific advance, most biggest scientific advancement in the next 10 to 20 years? Um, and how do you think they're going to affect, affect their daily life? <clears throat> well, I think, the, I think the biggest foundational technology is going to be AI. Mm. We're still in the foothills of, uh, foot of it. The thing about AI is that it's a general purpose technology, so it's going to impact every single way, bit, bit, facet of life. Yeah, I mean, yeah. every single industry, every single sector is going to be impacted by AI. But if you think about singular, if you think about singular uh, uh, technologies and innovations, you know, we're talking about you know biology, the way that we understand biology and we're using biology before biology was untouchable, pretty much, other than sort of pretty basic, you know, genetic work. Now we're actually creating new biology and new bi biological materials mm. uh, and humans have never been able to do that before which is incredible um, but then you look at things like fusion i think we're on the cusp of fusion. real yeah, real yeah, yeah. um sort of evolution of fusion and then we got quantum as well i mean on, this is a really exciting time yeah, 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 to be, yeah, yeah, to be alive yeah, yeah. and it's a pretty amazing time to be doing my job which is using the power of the state to try and support these innovations. Do you have any intel on, uh, on, on fusion? I was speaking to someone at the department about six months ago. Can I stop doing this now? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. My, 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 I know, sorry, you, I sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time ago, I'm still grinding <laughs> away here. Anyway, Your, yours is going to come up better than me. I'm going I'm to pause the question on fusion for a moment because okay. I'm very interested in that. Uh, and we're going to go to the stage two. And stage two, we're going to pass this to you, sir. Yes. And this is for me, this is for you. Thank you. So we have got a funnel and filter. And what we're going to do is we are going to put the filter paper in the funnel. Like this. And if you take yourself a test tube and put it underneath, yeah. you kind of got to hold this in there. And what I did yesterday with the Bridget, for a very similar experiment, okay. but the same one, is I discovered that you can just take this out, put it on the table, I'm sure it'll be clean. And, uh, and you can pour this straight in. All right. Through the filter paper. And then use your remaining water and your test tube to force Oh, I see. Okay, the sugar through. Just a little bit. And then you'll get a few drops. 
A few drops should go here. I've got a few drops. Okay, career opportunities, right? Oh, so yeah. you mentioned about the- You're after my job. <laughs> I'm not qualified yet. Okay. Maybe, maybe oh, one day, maybe no, one day. You certainly I'm, are. I'm looking for a mentor, so you know, <laughs> in a few years time. <laughs> um, so in terms of the next kind of careers for, for students that follow me and think of what to do in the future, with the really big changes that you've mentioned happening in technology, what, what jobs are likely to come up in the future for today's students? Well, I think having the foundational qualifications is still essential. Mm. You know, the STEM, the STEM subjects are taught so much better than they were in my day. They are, you know, they're so important and foundational, so they, they can be applied in so many different ways. If you get those basic maths and science degrees, and then you have some of the other uh, opportunities that are there, um, you know, that are now available in school, grab them with both hands. And if I was, I had a really difficult time in school, and I didn't really leave with any usable qualifications, but I, I really think that putting in that extra work when you're young, mm. it saves so much time when you're older. And I, it's a really hard thing for somebody of my age to say to someone who's young, who's young. I understand how frustrating it is to hear this from mm -hmm. someone my age. But the, the truth is that putting in that extra bit of help, uh, that extra bit of attention, that extra bit of application, um, saves doing what I had to do, which was going back to school later in life, I and mean, secondary school later in life. Now that's an extreme example, mm. but it also, it keeps so many doors open when you go through life. Mm. So the more you apply yourself at a younger age, sometimes it means sacrificing seeing your friends for a little bit, sometimes it sacrifices seeing a movie or be, playing video games or whatever, but that little sacrifice keeps all these doors open. Yeah. And the more you don't apply yourself, the more the doors just shut. Yeah, yeah. And to open them again later in life takes so much effort. So my advice is just, you know, a, a get, get a foundational set of qualifications, start to meet people who are doing really interesting pieces of work. Because it's amazing when people contact you and say they're young and say, I want to understand more about politics. And I know it's the same for science. The people who are working in these companies who are innovating and doing exciting stuff, they love being contacted by people who are just interested in what they do. And if you're interested in what people are doing, then contact them. And I know that schools will find a, an appropriate way to go and get experience in some of these companies and see it firsthand, because those are the connections that are going to get you across the line when the decision comes about what you do next. Fantastic. So two key things is to put your attention into it now, so you don't have to redo it later. But obviously, it's amazing that you, you were able to do it a second time and put yourself out there yes. and make connections with people in industry and things yeah. that you're interested in. Yeah. That's sometimes, you know, like when, when you're young and, and sometimes through life, you think, my God, I've got all this enthusiasm and I've got a, a view and mm. I've got a, a, a window into a way of life that's quite unique. Why aren't I being noticed? Mm -hmm. And the answer is that you're not being noticed because you haven't made yourself noticed. You haven't contacted anyone. Uh, and sometimes these really interesting experienced people who are doing the work that you admire, they don't know that you're sitting in that house on that yeah, estate, yeah. in that place. Um, so you've got to kind of reach out and sometimes it's difficult just reaching out to people blind, but actually, you know, it's really worth it. And people yeah. like being connected with and, and recognised for the work they're doing. That's amazing advice. Uh, put the test tube into the beaker, please. Oh, okay. And what I'm going to do now... I seem to have got more... That's okay. In my test tube, okay. then you have. I'm going to ask you to pour this into your test tube. Now, when I was a kid, I didn't listen to the teacher properly, and I just poured this into the water. Oh, okay. And not the test tube. So this is into the test into tube. Into the test tube. How much? Ah, uh, like a fingernail is worth about. Oh. Yeah, that's great. And then I'm going to try the same myself, and you can use the kettle to pour water into the beaker, not the test into tube. Into the beaker, not yep. the test tube. How much? Ah, uh, like a big dollop. <laughs> Maybe just all of it. Maybe we'll let, yeah, because I think we need as much hot water in there as possible. And there's not much in that kettle. Okay. So we're going to use you. Still and, some there. And you. then we put your test tube in there. Okay. And uh, what we might have to do here is edit this because the time that's going to take to react is going to be uh, longer than you probably need to go at. So I'm going to cut this and splice this to the Okay. Um, we're going to leave this for five minutes. Okay. We're going to come back. And the colour this is going to change to, if there is a reducing sugar in it, is yellow or green if low. Yeah. But if it's a brick red, that means it's got a very high sugar content in there. Let's put the five minute timer on. Peter, thank, thank you very much. Very, very much. Real pleasure. Time and the answers to your questions uh, gives me a pleasure. Hey, Bridget, thanks so much for joining us today. Good to be back here. Yes. How was your science at school? 
Um, so I haven't done science for a very long time. I did my okay. GCSEs in the year 2000. Okay. So we've got these really high tech pieces of equipment here. This one is yours. This one is mine. And this is called a pestle and mortar from the GCC Days of Science. And we're just going to start mashing out the pestle into a sort of pasty. Okay. Um, and if Key is hungry later, you know, you can use that for lunch. <laughs> and I should know what I'm doing. So just a small piece. And if you need a bit of water, I'm going to uh, mash this up a little bit to get the, uh, the starch out of there. Now, one of my first questions to you, Bridget, I, I hear a few rumours. A few rumours. Okay. From 2026, they say that the school summer holidays are going to shorten. Is this, is this true? Uh, I don't know why you're hearing that, because okay. we don't have any plans to, okay. we don't have any plans to, to change that though. Okay, so students at home can be rest assured that that six weeks is here to stay. We have launched a curriculum assessment review, however. Okay. So we want to make sure that um, all new people get a, a rounded education and that okay. when they leave school, they're well prepared for what comes next. Something for those at home to bear in mind. Okay, I think this is just about ready. And what we can do now is use one of the pipettes and test tubes yeah. to take a small sample and we're going to try and load it into our pipette. Now this is like a little bit of a demonstration for me because we're going to take a funnel, one for you, one for me. And I'm going to put the funnel on here. This I'm going to have lying around. And we put this in here like this. Now when I tested this earlier, it works most of the time. Okay. So what we're going to do, use the pipette, and you push it, and it in like that. It's a bit gross. And we're going to squeeze it into our food paper. And if we get enough in there, as much of it as we can. Right. Oh. I'm not doing very well with the pipette, I'm bad. <laughs> It's this absolute same with me. So we can actually lift up the whole thing. Okay. And pour it in there. This is what we call bucket science. There we go. Pour it all in. And then we're going to use a little bit of water. And pour it on top. Now this one's quite slow, I think. Just a little bit. And we wait for some of it to drip down. Second question. Now, on the topic of time off, now yeah. I'm asking a lot about this because our view is that students are very interested in the amount of time that the school day is going to be. And I put on Instagram this morning, what would you like to ask the education secretary? And a common question I got was, are we going to change at any point to a four day week, a three day weekend? Kids will know how much time they have at school. Mm -hmm. And I promise I would ask myself if I'm asking now. Uh, I'm going to have to disappoint oh. all of us, um, <laughs> and say that unfortunately that's um, that's not going to change anytime soon. Really. Uh, um, I can see yours is ready, mine is ready too. I think we can take a funnel and everything, just put it straight into this bowl here, and keep the test tube in hand. We can put our test tubes in here temporarily to fill up our hands. Now what we're going to do is I'll move this out of so the cameras can pick this up. We've got allegedly carbohydrate starch in there. And what I've got here is iodine solution. Now I'm going to keep this far away from you because this is very, very staining. Okay. Um, and I've learned that the hard way when I still have my white shirts. Uh, I wouldn't listen to the lab tech and I wouldn't wear a, a lab coat. Um, I haven't learned my lesson. I just don't wear white shirts anymore. Next time I'm dressed like this today. So what I'm going to do is show you and the audience. So actually, you can give this a go. This has got a pipette and stool in it. Now this is water. And all I want you to do is show the audience at home. When you put a few drops in water, it should remain orange, which proves that there's no starch in the water. Okay. If you have to give that so a bit. few drops from here a into here. into there. Perfect. Fantastic. As we can see, we've got an orangey coloured solution of iodine. Iodine mixing to your water. But when we put that in starch, exactly what you said at the beginning, if there is starch in the bread, something should happen. Now I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to start with your solution. And there we have it. Instantaneously turns black, which means we have got traces of starch. So that was the starch test. And that brings me to a third question, again, from our audience. Oh, this is a bit of a um, this is a bit of a controversial one, a controversial question. Um, this is actually from one of the students uh, within my company. Um, when I mentioned to all of them that I was speaking to you, 
uh, she wants us to know if there's any chance the education is going to have a, a large overhaul anytime soon because she wants us to know why the education system hasn't changed since the Victorian times. That was her question. Um, well, that's that's a big question, yeah. a big philosophical question. Mm. What I would say uh, in answer is that we have launched a curriculum and assessment review. So I became Education Secretary in July. We launched that quite quickly. We've got a chair in place, a panel that's supporting the chair. And we're very soon going to launch a process of engagement. So there'll be lots of opportunities for, for young people, as well as for uh, teachers, businesses and others to get involved in shaping what our children need, what our young people need, mm. in order to leave school ready for what comes next, really prepared for, for the future. And who can get involved? Um, there'll be a wide process of engagement, including across the country, across England, okay. um, and a call for evidence as well. So people will be able to submit their views in my being too. Okay, I better get on there then. You better. Okay. <laughs> we are now on experiment two in food testing, which is the test for protein. Now the test for protein I took these salami pieces for a reason because I don't want to be carrying bacon or chicken in my bag on the way from Liv uh, London to Liverpool because um, I think I would get a few complaints. So we've got pepperoni, which I hope doesn't smell. And I'm going to slice this. I'm going to show you this one. So this one involves something called the Biorec test. And the Biorec test is a blue solution. I'm going to hand this over to you. And this is bucket science at its finest. We should really be using pipettes here, but it works either way. So I'm going to take this off, loosen it slightly. If you pour a little bit on top of the salami that I've just cut, yeah. you know, so it, can, it can be slathered on top. No? That's perfect, that's perfect. And I'll show this up to the camera a little bit. I'm not sure if we can zoom in. So whilst we're waiting for this, I've got a question to ask. And the question is this, this one comes from me. I'm a big tech nerd and I love AI. Um, and I want to know what the plans are for the next four to five years on integrating AI into the classroom. So I think there's lots of potential where it comes to the use of technology and AI. I think both in terms of children's learning and how we can support more tailored learning, mm -hmm. but also how to free up teacher time. Um, right. So okay. how we might use AI around some, ta some tasks like marking and assessment that might mean that the time that teachers have, they can spend doing more face-to-face -face work and interventions with children. But mm -hmm. I think it's evolving quite fast yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and we need to make sure the safeguards around it. But the Department for Education has recently launched um, some investment in, a, in AI to make sure that we're developing kind of tools that I think will more confident work and why we can make sure we've got the right kind of safety mechanisms around it too. Fantastic. So in, a, in an ideal world in a few years time, we can expect teachers spending less time marking, not because the marking assessment isn't being done, but the AI is able to do that. So the teachers got more time to plan engaging lessons and more time with students in class rather than marking going around. Because we know the biggest difference in terms of teaching is the time that teachers get to spend directly face to face with young people and I want to make sure they've got um, the right to do more of that. Brilliant. Okay, I like that. I really like that. And that takes me to this. Now, it might be hard for the, the cameras to pick this up, but what would you say? Would you say that's done a, a sort of purpley colour? It's it, pretty much. It's pretty it's much. Not, <laughs> it's, it's not perfect. It's, it's pretty much there. <laughs> This is what we call science, folks. So <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work perfectly, but we can just about see it's turned a purple colour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to show this up to the cameras. Purple colour. Oh, we've got a person here. Fantastic. Bridget, thank you so much for your time for taking part in the practical. And, uh, and yeah, I really enjoyed that. No, yeah, thanks, Adam. I've learned a bit as well. Okay, <laughs> great stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.